You see a set of tire tracks in the brown slush that covers the plaza mosaic. The tire tracks were left here by an unknown event that took place some days ago. It's a message written in the language of burnt rubber. Some of that rubber stuck to the tiles right in front of the whirling in rags. This is point A. The driver started there and then accelerated straight into the fence. The driver proceeded to back out of the yard, barely stopping before hitting the adjacent building, before heading south. Must have been in a hurry. You are correct. This is a rather motor carriage friendly city. Somehow that makes you feel scared. You don't know why. I'm not sure. There are plenty of traffic accidents waiting to happen in Martinez. With the jam right here on the roundabout, I would keep them separate. You could follow the track south. There seems to be a canal there. See where they went, if you find the time. Yes? Hello? Me? No one. I'm just a working class woman. She doesn't really want to be disturbed that much. If she's such a working class woman, why isn't she working? This was a tremendously useful interlude. For any trouble, officer. It's the voice of someone who has something to hide, my liege. I don't want to be seen talking to the gendarmerie, if that's okay. I just want to finish my cigarette. Don't let him go. This could be your witness. The balcony has a great view of the whole thing. Is it really that important? All right, but make it quick. Once I finish this cigarette, I have to run. I'd even go so far as to say that the view is a little too good, my dear gendarme. Do you have an estimate of when the body will be taken away? We will remove the body as soon as possible. Now tell us, where were you last Sunday? Oh. You already asked me that, didn't you? Wait, is someone else investigating the lynching? No, not you. Some more muscular type. And when did you speak to this more muscular gentleman? Last week? I don't know. Look. A downy blanket of white to cover up the miserable poverty of the scene. You didn't answer the question. What were you doing last Sunday? <sighs> I had a friend over. He was my Sunday friend. He doesn't reply, gesturing no with his cigarette. Under the grey sky, the neighboring windows are streaked with rain. I'd even go so far as to say that the view is a little too good, my- We will remove the bird. Oh. you Wait, is someone else investigating the- No, not you two. Some more money- And when did you- sp Last week? It'll take more than rain to bring this place back to life. You didn't answer the question. <sighs> It was my son. He doesn't reply. My name? My name is Martin Martinez. That's definitely not his real name. No, of course not. Could you please lower your voice? No. We won't. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really need to get going. 
This isn't the place or time for questions. Who knows who might be watching from the distance, hidden behind the curtains. For a moment, the man on the balcony seems almost vulnerable. Something moves in the depths of his feline eyes, compassion, and a hint of understanding. I am sorry, but I really don't have the information you're looking for. But, hold on, what's that? For a split second, his hand lingers, as though gesturing towards a stone placed right next to the front door. It's a sign. Good luck with the investigation. He's gone. No point in running. Tenements like these often have multiple exits. If he doesn't want to talk to us, then he'll know how to hide himself. He could be a witness. Him or his Sunday friend. Either way, we need to look into that muscular type who's asking about our case. He did leave us a sign. Did you see that? He wanted to draw our attention to that stone right over there. If we find a way inside the building, we can ask around for his apartment. A stone, like any other, lying in a whirl of sleet and mud. Maybe there's something under it. There's a key beneath it, rusty from the dirt. This must be for the front door. Pity doesn't have the apartment number on it. This building has many apartments and a man can be in any of them. We'll just have to go in and see. says number 11. It's a solid lump of metal, but the shackle is deeply corroded. A solid pair of chain cutters would make short work of it. Better whip out those cutters. You won't get very far otherwise. This door has been closed with a padlock. The chalk drawn lump, the shackle snaps like a twig and the lock falls to the floor with a little thud. It should be possible to enter now. After you, detective. A plaster cast bust depicts a middle-aged man with impressive sideburns. The name on the plinth reads, Kras Mazov. Whoever lives here definitely shares your enthusiasm. There aren't many communists around, not after the revolution. Some youth still keep the ideology going, it seems. The White Star, the photos on the wall. I think we have broken into the apartment of a young communard. How fitting.
hear someone walking around inside, rearranging the furniture. The number on the panel says 10. The walking stops abruptly, but no one comes to the door. You can feel tension on the other side. A poor communard from the looks of it. The room is barely bigger than a closet. Let's go. We don't have a reason to get inside that apartment. It's generally easier to do things if you have literally any reason. Give me a moment. The cold never does any good for my bronchitis. <laughs> Go ahead then. What do you want to know, policeman? She's the cleaning lady. She knows the floor plan and the residence. Yes, yes. I know who you mean. The scrawny boy who's always smoking like the devil. Right? Somewhere in the building, a child starts crying. You hear a radio tuned to a talk show and someone taking a shower. What's he in trouble for? Talk? <laughs> what was so funny about that? He lives upstairs in room 28. Go to the balcony. It's one of those doors there. He's usually home in the evening. Thank you. We should go check out his apartment on the balcony. See if he's home. still be accessible through the apartment next to it. That one didn't have a door. Sadly, nothing of great value remains here. Indeed. Give me a moment. Ask away, policeman. Some lunatic lost his mind. All kinds of morons pass through these halls. With how small these rooms are, wouldn't you want to break the wall down? The hell am I supposed to know? Another nut job, I assume. No one lives there. It's been empty for months. Impossible. I would know if someone had moved in there. Maybe it's those countercultural people again. Breaking into a house like it's a public space. You're a policeman. Be good and take a look, will you? Great. Young people. They're worse than rats. You know, always littering the hallways with trinkets and empty beer cans. Oh, no. You hear someone walking around inside. There's no sweet talking your way in there. Be official. You have plenty of reason to enter. Well, that was smart. Satisfied? My name is Marielle Charpentier and I'm an agent with Martinez Realty Associates. I am not breaking in, as I have every right to be here. The keys, see? Her voice is really cheerful, despite her obviously hating you. Do you want to see my ID as well? You can't legally ask for it, but why not? Want to see my residence permit too? It feels flimsy in hand, with the words Revachol Zone of Control, written under a nondescript municipal logo. There's a picture of her with shorter hair inside, along with all her personal details. Be friendly.
Thank you. Do you have any questions? I need to be back in Midtown in an hour. Oh, that's another huge mess. The former tenant owes us three months of rent. Three. We closed the apartment and planned on auctioning off the valuables, but... And again, I have no idea how stupid mistakes like this can even happen. But Ron, when he came to close the door, didn't close the neighboring door. And there's a hole in the wall. A hole in the wall. Can you believe it? And then the tenant ran off with his stuff. He's gone. The money's gone. Just like that. The sum must have been puny. Oh, it irks her. The incompetence. These apartments are perfectly fine. They have gorgeous architecture, a million real view of the bay, good ventilation, neighbors, life, spark, and they are affordable. I'll tell you, Martinez has a future. In a few years, it's going to blossom with artists and creatives and those radio computer wizards. Don't ask me what happened with the wall. I have no idea how we're going to find the time or resources to fix it. Both apartments are now unrentable. Both. I need to get it ready for the next lease, but as you can see, the previous tenant completely trashed the place. It was some kind of a moribund old man who used to be a business owner. You'd think they'd make rent. A sudden serious look crosses her face. This story didn't have a happy ending. But that was months ago. Anyway, was there anything you wanted or is that it? I'm in a hurry. Of course. Give me a moment. I see. I hope some good people are finally going to move in. This place needs them. We won't be killing anyone. And you shouldn't say things like that. You're a police officer. There's been enough killing. I've seen it. <laughs> She's seen it and known those who have been killed. <laughs> that isn't just a five-pointed star. It's an inverted white pentagram cradled in a wreath of antlers, the iconography of communism, in other words. The star and antlers was developed in the sixth decade of the last century and quickly adopted by Mezov and the communards during the revolution. Even today, half a century after, the star and antlers retains the ability to evoke hope, disappointment and fear in equal measure to symbolize the toppling of the old order. Also, some social democrats were already using it. The wreath of antlers represents a natural crown. It was about building a society that could exist in accord with the natural world and at the same time above it. Because white is the color of peace. Gone, gone is the glory of hope only the scribblings of impoverished students remain in dirty hallways. You are the big communism builder now. It's you or no one.
piggies have learned how to saunter up staircases. I didn't think you could do that with hooves. But here you are. Yeah, I can see that. Cool mutations. That smell coming from her paint bucket. It's not paint. It's heavy fuel oil. Red dyed heavy fuel oil intended for exclusive use in government vehicles, to be precise. What did you think I was using? Aquarelles? Sucked it out of a cop's fuel tank myself. Back in Jamrock. She really did it. She's proud of it too. Something to think about next time you're driving around in your pretty little piggy carriage. What for? Well, if it's for art. But what kind of art are we talking about? Sounds like you're just about to live out your self-pity, not make a statement. I can't have shit art on my conscience. Yeah, not gonna hold my breath, Piggy. You look like you'd suck at uh, everything, really. Hey, so we've been monitoring you internally, and now we know your copo type. Yes, guess what's yours? No, you're the sorry cop. The cop who's sorriest. Let's make it official then, shall we? Huge lack of enthusiasm going on in here. What? Jealous of the sorry cop? I think they'll be fine. Don't worry. They'll be super, super fine. It'll be totally okay. You can dual copotype from sorry to anything. Yes, yes. Impotent rage and lamentation. Let's wrap it up? No, you don't. Come on. You'll be back to saying sorry in two minutes. Stop wasting time and begin the repentance. Wow. Okay. Fuck off. Maybe we were wrong about you then. Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? Ooh, not only have you found my address, you've discovered my biggest secret. I'm a coal miner. It doesn't have to do anything at all. Nothing does. Like me. Right now, I'm doing nothing at all. The inspiration will come to her once hell is set loose on the streets. It's too calm right now. Shoot, Piggy. It's what you do, isn't it?
This door is made of metal and appears to be reinforced. Someone here really values their security. Number 28. This is where the cleaning lady said the smoker on the balcony lives. Let's see if anyone's home. Knock on the door. No one answers. Looks like the young man we are looking for isn't home. I think our best chance to catch him is in the evening. We should return tomorrow after we have finished with our day's work. How about 9 p.m.? Sound good? Tomorrow, 9 p.m., right here. Apartment number 28. Good, let's go. Damn. Turns out it's quite tricky finding someone in a big apartment building. Don't worry. You'll get him. Remember, tomorrow. He's probably gone for today. can I help you with? Not an umbrella, I hope. I don't need one myself, you see. Sadly, I need this one myself. It's hydrophobic, repels water, almost magically. The company makes them for offshore platform personnel. Very sturdy. What I can do for you is answer some questions. Nothing like talking to pass a rainy day. She reaches for the photo, takes it, then holds it in her hand. For about half a minute, in silence. It was taken with a trigger not long ago. This is the man's upper body. There were no more markings on his hands or legs. Her mouth is relaxed. The accordion lines near her mouth vanish. The pearls of her eyes move slowly on the photo's surface. Uh, sorry. I was trying to see if I can read the web of interdependencies between these points. The stars. I can't. But that's how you read this story. The points themselves don't have letters, numbers, anything. Their size, location on the body and distance from each other tells you what they represent. Close. Port cities. This is an Oranese map of the waterways, a sailor's tattoo worn by wayfarers of the Dolorean century. Over 300 years ago, the sailors would mark their bodies to map their travels. Quite a few. Vredefort, the Oranese capital, traditionally stands on the right shoulder. He started somewhere near here, I think. What next? Then he made his way to the Preto Grangi, through what I think must be the Stutz Canal, an artificial channel through the Occident. From the Preto, he sailed to the Insulindic Ocean, first the Semnes Islands, then this. Revachol. Those are the two constants. Redefort on the shoulder, and Revachol in the heart. They started the tradition of these maps right after the discovery of Insulinde, at the dawn of the inter age. The old, old world passing by, and the new, new world already here. You said you can't read it. I can't. This man was no sailor, and these are no ports. I can understand geographic fragments, but not their meaning. The sailor's soul would use it to fly back home if they should die abroad. This is a sort of contraption, to be reeled back in by. The silver cord, they would call it. Where is he now?
That is precisely what the sailors feared when they drew these maps. A fear of drowning within one's own corpse. His platoon members? The other contractors. Though I do not suggest you go and show them that picture. This man was their friend and comrade. Surely there are other people to ask about the tattoo. This is not necessary to complete the task, officer. It's a dangerous side task. Search elsewhere. Do what you have to do, detective. I don't think deciphering that tattoo should come before public security. But if you should wade into the mob to find out, I couldn't stop you. We will be careful, ma'am. Is there anything else I can help you with? More lessons in basic reality? My favorite part of the day. Go ahead, ask me anything. It remains a mystery what you mean by this. Glad to have been of assistance. in southwest. Its coin slot is full of fossilized bubblegum, rendering the machine permanently inaccessible. The metal feels cold and wet under your palm. It looks unhygienic. A thick layer of graffito covers the lenses. You spell out the word ONUG written on the other side, with N and C scribbled backwards. That's Kuno on the lens. Under the graffito, a sea of blues and greys appear. Behind the water lies a coast studded with concrete and reeds. On it, a church on stilts. You know this to be the star of Perikonassis, or the Cairo. The central symbol of the Perikonassian church, a star, a great moral height to be strived towards. The church looks old and weather-worn. There are no lights in the windows. Around the large wooden building you see chunks of sea ice gathered on the beach and a small tent set up on the ice. You got the 20 real. Good. You got the room for the night, but remember, you'll need another 20 real tomorrow. Can I help you? Another thing. Great. I love those. What are you, a cook now? That's none of your business. You're not. You're a menace. Fine, okay, the kitchen is closed until 1 p.m. because the real cook is working. Yes? Behind the dock workers, a ceiling height window.